All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to week two of the class. I have, I hope everyone had a uh, wonderful first weekend here. Um, today's lecture 2.1, the meaning of mythology. We are finally getting in uh, to classical mythology and we're gonna start this week by talking about what classical mythology actually is and why it's important uh, in the world today, right? Why should anybody care about this stuff? I think the main answer, right, is because it's really awesome and everybody loves it. But we will think of other reasons as well. Here is our plan for today. Okay, um, so we are going to start uh, with a brief recap of Friday's lecture. This is one of the things I'll do fairly commonly, uh, is kind of start with maybe five or so minutes going over whatever we did in the previous class. And the idea here is to really hammer home the takeaway points. You know, I don't think most of my lectures are gonna be quite as detailed as Friday's lecture was, but nevertheless, there's still a lot of information coming at you. And it's kind of nice to be able to start each class with a brief recap and make sure that you have the main kind of takeaway points and you can kind of double check your notes from last time to make sure that you have those. After that, we're gonna talk a little bit about why we study mythology, right? Why it's important uh, for understanding the ancient Greek world, and then also why it's important uh, for understand or for kind of being in the world today, right? Why, why is it important that you guys know this? Um, and then we're gonna deal with a little bit of um, kind of what mythology actually is. And this is where I'm actually gonna have you guys start to, uh, to work together in small groups to come up with a definition that works for, uh, for the class. So before I kind of give you my perspective on that, I'm gonna see what you guys come up with um, and we'll, uh, we'll kind of embark upon our group work there. Uh, again, the, the issue with that is that Zoom only allows us to have breakout rooms of, I don't know, I think, I think we only get like 20 breakout rooms for like 500 people. So it'd be like 25 people in a room. Uh, so once we get to that point in the, uh, the class today, I'll tell you guys how I want you to go about doing that. And you'll be working in groups of five using the kind of Google suite of tools. So like Google Meet, Google, uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, that sort of thing. Um, and then you'll be breaking out to work in your own group and then we'll come back uh, to talk about things together. And then finally, if we have time at the end, we're gonna dig into a, a few origin stories from around the world. So Wednesday's class is gonna be all about Greek mythology origin stories. Uh, today, if we get to it, um, we'll talk about uh, kind of origin stories from other parts of the ancient world, from the Near East, uh, biblical origin stories, uh, Egyptian origin stories, that sort of thing, so that when we get to the origin stories of ancient Greece on Wednesday, you guys kind of have some context for the types of stories that are being told throughout the world right around this time. Uh, so a few announcements first. Um, okay, so a few announcements first. Uh, we have got, um, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and put your, uh, your um, zoom into speaker view and that will allow you to see the slides kind of clearly here. Uh, and if you can kind of see the, the writing over here to my, uh, my, my right, I guess, um, then you're in the right spot and you're, you're good to go there. Again, if you have a question, go ahead and direct message your TA in the, the Zoom chat, uh, and then your TA will go ahead and forward that on to me at certain points in the lecture. Um, honors projects. Uh, so I've made some progress on this. If you're uh, an honors student, um, I will uh, have the official thing written up for Wednesday and uh, we'll, we'll set up a time to kind of talk more in depth. Um, but yes, this week I'll have the actual form that you guys can fill out and then we'll go into more depth there. Um, I need to go ahead and do one thing here and make one more person a co-host on this. So hang tight here. All right, Katie Walker, let me see if I can make you a co-host. There we go. All right, Katie, let me know if that uh, did not work for you, but I think you should be good to go there. All the other TAs, I think you're good to go. Um, other questions that have come through my chat, were we supposed to take notes last week uh, on the Friday lecture? I mean, it's always good to take a few notes, um, but that was like a ton of information coming at you. Really what I wanted you to do was like kind of sit back, relax, uh, and take in the, the big picture of, uh, of world history. Um, and uh, moving forward, starting with today, I want you to have a little bit more in-depth notes and it'll be a little bit uh, kind of less intense in terms of the amount of content. 
Uh, other question, how was my weekend? My weekend was pretty good. I'm trying to think, what did I do this weekend? I don't know, normally I'd be watching football. There was no football. Um, what, what did I do? All right, so I got, well, I guess one of the things, I, I played some video games. I, I got like this virtual reality headset last week that I'm gonna be using in like a, a class. I'm, I think this is what I might do for the honors assignment here. So I was like playing around with that. <laughs> And the, uh, the thing is with that, um, so my, my fiance, the person I was going to get married to uh, this summer, but that didn't work out um, because of, you know, COVID. Uh, she says that I look like a complete idiot in this thing. And I think it's impossible not to, right? Because you got the, <laughs> the big mask on your head and you're just going around like this. So I don't know. I spent a lot of time doing that this weekend. Um, anyway, let's move on. Okay. So, recapping all of history, let's go ahead and take this from the top, right? Uh, so, we started with the origin of the universe 13.7 billion years ago. Hey, you guys can write that number down just to get a sense for how old this thing actually is. 13.7 billion. I think that's, what is it, 13.7 thousand million years old? It's an insane number. Um, but humans don't show up until 200,000 years ago, right? So like for almost all of universal history, there are no humans, at least here on Earth. Um, and they show up about 200,000 years ago. And then for 190,000 years, we don't, we don't do very much. We just kind of all do the same thing, right? So we like go around and we like try to, to like eat woolly mammoths and like hopefully find some like berries and stuff to make them taste good. Um, but that's what everybody in the world, all across the world is doing, right? Uh, is trying to find food and procreate and not get eaten by uh, saber-toothed tigers. And then about 10,000 BC, um, you know, about 95% of the way into human history, we get what's called the Neolithic Revolution. That's when people settle down, start farming, start domesticating animals. And we talked last time about why that is just so darn important in human history, because it starts this cycle that we are still a part of today, right? And that allows you to build a little bit of extra food so that when, right, uh, when you, um, well, when the environment doesn't cooperate, right, and you have drought or famine or something like that, you actually don't starve because you've got like food stability, right? You've got some kind of stock uh, saved up. That allows you uh, to build a greater population. The larger population allows for some people to not be involved in food production. That allows them to do other things like be involved in technology, and that technology leads to more food. And that cycle just keeps going and going and going and going and going, and then here we are today, uh, and hopefully, um, well, now we have things like uh, Taco Bell. That's another thing I did this weekend. I had Taco Bell for dinner last night. It was delicious. Uh, I don't know if you guys have paid attention to it, but they recently revamped their uh, dollar menu. Um, so the thing to get on the dollar menu used to be the beefy Fritos burrito and, uh, they don't have that anymore, which I mean, I was worried about, right? Don't get me wrong here. I was like, it was, it was the best deal in fast food. Um, but they've replaced it with a beef burrito, which doesn't have the quite the same ring to it, but it's still pretty good. And they also have like a, a double stack nacho taco, which is also pretty good. So like, I would say, don't freak out. It's still pretty good stuff. Uh, you know, you can eat like 3,000 calories for like $3.30 or something. So it gets, it gets the Dr. Rob stamp of approval. <laughs> um, okay, but back to the Neolithic Revolution. They only wish they had Taco Bell. Uh, so we move from that after a few thousand more years into the Bronze Age, right? The Bronze Age uh, is what we call like basically the time when you get the rise of complex civilization, right? Where things move from everybody doing the same thing to people doing different things, right? All of a sudden you have some people coordinating, um, you have some people coordinating things like irrigation projects and they become the political elite. You have other people working in uh, religion, right? Becoming the priesthood. You still have like 95% of the people producing food, but just the fact that a few people are doing other things allows for this kind of great um, uh, complexity of material culture uh, like you see here, right? With the uh, Mycenaeans on mainland Greece, uh, on Crete, um, in Egypt and in the Near East. And that lasts for about 2000 years from 3000 BC around 12 to around 1200 BC. Okay, 
Uh, now, one of the crazy things, right, is we've got these complex civilizations like, like kind of all over the place. And they all come kind of crashing down right around the same time. And that's when we get uh, the Dark Ages. And at the Dark Ages, we start to see the end of these kind of palaces that were built throughout the Greek world. So remember, during the second millennium BC, we have the Minoan palaces on the island of Crete. So the Palace of Knossos here, we'll talk more about that later. We also have the Mycenaean palaces on the Greek mainland, like you see with Mycenae here. Again, one of the big differences is that those Minoan palaces tend not to have defensive walls. The Mycenaean palaces like this have absolutely massive defensive walls. Now, during the Dark Ages, all those disappear and things just turn to hell, right? Like, it's like their Taco Bell value menu disappeared and it wasn't replaced with a beefy burrito or a nacho double stack taco. Instead, their palaces collapse. They forget how to write. Their material culture just becomes, well, I don't know, not very exciting at all. Uh, and for like 400 years, um, the kind of complexity of the Bronze Age dissipates into, um, you know, really small dispersed settlements. And that all begins to change around 800, 750 BCE. And in Greece, this is what we call the start of the Archaic period. And this is a little bit of a misnomer, right? So if you remember one thing about the Archaic period, remember that this is like, this is where all the things that we consider ancient Greece, like get their start, right? So when we think of the Olympics and we think of Greek colonization and we think of Greek architecture and Greek temples and Greek pottery and democracy, all these things get their start during the Archaic period. And the Archaic period comes to a close in a series of wars between the city-states of Greece and the empire of, uh, of Persia, which at the time was the greatest empire the world had ever seen. And so Greece goes up against Persia. Persia has invaded Greece. And Greece pulls off like one of the all-time great upsets. Nobody thinks they're going to be able to survive this thing. And they do. So they don't destroy Persia, right? It's not like they, they, they destroy the Persian Empire right now, but they're able to fend them off. And that brings us to the classical period of Greece. And this is when they take all those things um, that started in the, the archaic and they perfect them, right? So uh, architecture, like you see on the Acropolis here, right? With the Parthenon and the Propylaea and the Rectheon. Um, and the Temple of Athena Nike right here. We'll talk about all these things as we get later into the course. Um, these are all achievements of the classical era, which goes from around 480 or 479 to 323 BCE. And that's when we see things start to kind of change. Again, classical Greece is marked by democracy. And during the next period, we lose that democracy and we get kind of empire building once again, this time led by Alexander the Great, um, who ends up not only kind of uniting Greece, but then marching eastward into Persia and eventually defeating the Persian Empire. Now, after Alexander dies, his giant empire breaks into all these different like little kind of successor empires and they all quibble with each other, right? Again, think of this as like Game of Thrones world where Alexander's successors fight with each other for the Iron Throne. Uh, and because they're not able to unite, what ends up happening here is that Rome ends up building up in the West without a lot of competition. They're able to march into the East and then pick off those successor empires one by one. So that's the kind of like seven minute nitty gritty history of the entire universe through uh, the kind of end of Greek ruled Greece, at least. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, what we are doing uh, for part two is gonna ask the question, why study mythology? Um, I'll go ahead and check the chat real quick. Any, uh, any quick questions? Okay, what was my order at Taco Bell? We talked about that, that's good. They don't have potatoes anymore. Yeah, I heard about the potatoes. I hope you guys were able to get some of those. I was never a big potatoes person anyway. Uh, try the cheesy roll up. Oh, I will try it. I, sounds good. Um, attended, did we do the attendance quiz? Not yet. Uh, attendance quiz is fair game anytime in the lecture. Um, usually it takes place somewhere in the middle, middle to end of the lecture. 
Um, and then finally, uh, are we going to record the lecture? Yes, the lecture is being recorded and I will post it on D2L after this. Okay, so why study mythology? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we study mythology uh, because there's lots of references to mythology in the modern world and we need to understand them. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the really good ones. Uh, this is a little clip from, uh, from Louis C.K. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you actually here so hopefully you can hear this thing. Um, uh, so this is actually gonna come up several times in this class, partly because of Louis C.K., partly in large part because of Zeus. I think Louis C.K. was like accused of sexual harassment and, or assault a while ago. Uh, it's very much not a joking matter. Um, Zeus, again, we're going to tell lots of stories, like 80% of them are him engaged in sexual assault, which again is not like a joking matter. Um, but that being said, uh, the, uh, the, the clip here, I think gives us a good sense, uh, for why, um, uh, classical mythology can still be, uh, very relevant, um, in the world today. So let me try to share my screen. And if uh, the sound does not come through, can somebody go ahead and uh, shoot me a, uh, a direct message? All right, let's go ahead and move on. I apologize if the, uh, the sound was a little, little bit low. That was my first time trying to share a video like that. You guys will deal. Look it up on YouTube or something. Anyway, one good reason to uh, study classical mythology so that you can get all the hilarious allusions to mythology in the modern world. Uh, so, I'll go ahead and tell everybody on here now, one of the questions on the midterm will be, who is Achilles' mother? So uh, make sure to go ahead and find out the actual answer to that. It is not Campampatese. Um, but anyway, look it up. So let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, here's what I would like you guys to do now, all right? So go ahead and take a couple minutes on your own and outside of the kind of um, reason of uh, basically we can understand allusions to mythology in the modern world. See if you guys can jot down any other uh, reasons why understanding classical mythology might be beneficial in your own life, in the world today, that sort of thing, right? So it's 11.24 now. I'm gonna give you guys until 11.27 and then I'll go ahead and take a few volunteers here. All right, let's go ahead and see what you guys came up with as a class here. Uh, what I want you to do is, if anybody has uh, great reasons why we should be studying mythology, go ahead and uh, type me a little message, send it to me as the host, and I'll get it up on the board here. Um, and uh, let me know in the chat if you like don't want me to share your name or something, but otherwise I'll be like, oh, Billy has a great idea, um, and then put it on there. So. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so we have got, uh, Kendra says it gives us interesting life lessons. Oh man, you guys are, I've gotten like 30, 40 responses already. You guys are on the, this, this is good. This is good, okay. All right, hang on, I gotta track all these down. All right, Kendra says, Interesting and good life lessons. Also, uh, that, okay, we've been getting that from a few people here. Um, insight into past societies and ideas from Emma, very, very good. Improves storytelling and writing skills. Excellent, right? Yeah, so this is, this is really good stuff. Um, learning from these stories gives us a sense for what a good story actually is. Um, more about teaching lessons, uh, help, helps us understand a culture's way of doing things. Absolutely, that's from Jackie. Um, <laughs> I'm not even gonna name this person, but somebody said, because it's easy because it's easy, shame on you people. <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, it's easy because it's fun, right? And because you enjoy it, that makes it not as difficult. <laughs> because it's easy, all right? Um, uh, 
themes and lessons in daily life. Very good. Let's see. I've gotten over a hundred responses to this. This is excellent. What else do we have? Basis for religion. Illusions in literature. Um, okay, so I think this gives us like a, uh, a relatively good sense here um, of the, the kind of um, broad range of reasons why studying mythology is useful, right? One is it's a good way to teach lessons about the world. Uh, two, right? We've got a couple of things on here that kind of say this in different ways. Uh, it gives us an insight into the way that ancient cultures are thinking, right? It's not just about the, the kind of story itself. The story tells us something about what those cultures believe. Um, it uh, helps us kind of understand why and how they do the things they do. It serves a fundamental um, kind of part in the religion of ancient cultures. And then like we saw with the movie clip, right? It can be um, alluded to in many different ways in both uh, kind of popular media, in architecture, in art, in literature, in lots of different places. So if we go over to the, uh, the list of things I came up with prior to class here, um, we can see uh, basically all the things that you guys just came up with, right? It helps us understand ancient Greek culture, their values. It shows, up how, it shows us how they viewed the world. Um, we get references in art, architecture, literature, drama, um, popular culture, that sort of thing. Um, it gives us a sense for all the different ways that the world has approached kind of fundamental questions about why the world is the way it is, how it functions, um, why people, why and how people should behave, um, that sort of thing. It gives us an understanding of kind of core human traits. Um, it gives us, uh, this came up in the chat a few times as well, right? Kind of a jumping off point uh, for the major religions that are still a large part of the world today. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, and this maybe, it, it's not be this is insane, it's easy, but it is the most fun you can have at the U of A and still somehow get class credit for it. Uh, so lots of really great reasons to study mythology. Okay, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move on to what mythology actually is. And this is where I want you guys to work in groups, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna have you guys work in groups to answer two questions, okay? Uh, so the first question is, what is the difference between mythology and religion? Okay. Uh, and what's the difference between religion and science? Right. So one of the things that, that we're working on here is to be able to develop uh, strong definitions. And one of the things you're going to find is as you move through different classes here at the U of A, anytime you're writing something research based, it's going to be fundamentally important to be really, really clear about how you define your terms, right? And while some things might be obvious, some things aren't, right? Like I think mythology and religion often get used interchangeably, and while they might be related, perhaps they are not exactly the same thing. So here's how we're gonna try to do the group work, all right? So I'm gonna put the, uh, the steps in the chat here. Everybody should be able to get this. And here's what you're gonna do. Um, and this is, it's going to take a little bit longer this time than it normally would uh, because everybody's kind of getting started, but we'll give it a shot here. All right. And then once we get this done the first time, it should be easier to do in future sessions. Um, all right. So here is the, uh, the seven, the seven step process I would like you guys to go through. All right. So first of all, stay signed into Zoom. Okay. Like don't, don't leave the Zoom here. All right. Uh, what I would like you to do though is go ahead and turn off your webcam so you can just down in the bottom left hand corner stop video and you can mute yourself so do both of those things and then go ahead and I want you to go into D2L and there's several links on there right there's a link to uh, the, the a spreadsheet that has which group you're in there's a link to a Google Doc template and there's a link uh, to a Google Slides template 
And what I want you guys to do is go ahead and open the, uh, the spreadsheet first and figure out which group you're in, all right? Uh, for right now, we're not gonna be select selecting groups ourselves or, or trading or anything like that. Uh, this is gonna be logistically the easiest way to do this. So you're in a group of five people, and what I would like to do is have the, uh, the first, um, the first person in the group, right? The first person with that number, right? If you're in group 37, the first person in group 37, I want you to email the other four people uh, with a um, invite to a, a Google meeting, okay? So Google Meet is just the free like video conferencing, video chat software through Google. It doesn't cost you anything. Everybody has access to this through the U of A. So go ahead and email the other four people. Then you guys as a group of five will be able to get together and talk through these uh, two questions, and then what I would like you to do is write down your answers on a Google slide. And uh, again, the way I'd like you to do that is download or kind of open the template on the link, all right? You're gonna have to go to file, make a copy, and then once you've got that copy, you can actually edit the copy, right? So you can't edit the link that's on there now, but you can download it and edit it, all right? Um, so I uh, can't find the link. So what you wanna do is go to D2L. Let me go ahead and bring this up and Make sure the link is indeed visible here. All right, so you want to go to D2L, go to content, go to Monday, August 31st, so it's under week two origin stories, Monday, August 31st. And there should be a link, the third one down, that says class 162 uh, D2 student groups. And then it should have each person's name, email address, and a group number attached to it. And that lets you know which group you're in. And then uh, what I would say is if the Let's say it's 11.36 now. If by 11.40, nobody has, like, you're supposed to be getting an invite to a uh, one of these, like, little Google Chats or Google Meets, and you haven't gotten it, the first person hasn't sent it, have the second person, like, person number two, go ahead and set, try to send it out to the group. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring it back together in the uh, the main Zoom meeting. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that this is, you know, some of the groups are probably working just fine right now. I think other ones are still trying to uh, figure out exactly kind of how to set up the meeting or figure out who's supposed to be sending it. What I'll do is is later today is I'll, uh, I'll post kind of a how-to. And what I'll want you guys to do for Wednesday is basically do what we're doing here, but have it basically ready to go. Uh, for Wednesday, so find some time over the course of the uh, the next couple, next day and a half, I guess, to get together with your group, answer these two questions, just put together one Google slide with your answer to these questions, uh, and then we'll be able to start with that on uh, on Wednesday, all right? So normally what we do now is we kind of share what our, our results are. Um, I've got some of my own answers for these kind of questions, but I think it'll be useful to actually hold off on that for right now, because um, I really do want to see what you guys have to say uh, prior to giving you my own kind of opinion on this. So here's what I'd like to do. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna see if I can jump ahead here in the, uh, the slideshow without kind of uh, giving away the answers. Um, the Let's see here, let me go back to, go back to this. There we go, okay, so attendance for today. Um, the uh, color is green once again. You've got a few minutes to go ahead and do this. The last thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and um, select green uh, under today's attendance quiz. It should say attendance one, August 31st. Um, go ahead and put that in. You'll get your credit for today. And then what I'll do is um, I will go ahead and kind of write up exactly what I'd like you guys to do in preparation for, uh, for Wednesday. So I'm gonna have you guys watch 
a kind of mini lecture that I've done on uh, some of the origin stories from different parts of the world. So we'll look at Egypt, we'll look at the Near East, and we'll look at uh, the kind of biblical origin story. Um, and then uh, the other thing I'm gonna have you guys do is get together in your group of five people and talk together for, I don't know, it doesn't have to be very long, 10 minutes or so, um, and answer those two questions. And then what we'll do is we'll start Wednesday's class by hearing from you guys and seeing what you've come up with for your definitions of what, um, what mythology uh, actually is, how it relates to religion, and then how religion in general relates to science, uh, because I, I think that you guys will have some very interesting uh, thoughts on that. Um, okay, so to conclude, remember, go ahead and put in green here. I'm gonna check, see if anybody's had issues here. All right, okay, all right, nothing so far with attendance. Um, okay, uh, so we will go ahead and uh, deal with that uh, for homework. And what I'd like you to do is watch those lectures. I want you to uh, go ahead and take a look at the readings. You don't have to, none of that, that's all due Friday. Um, so you can kind of start poking around, nothing you have to do. Um, but watch the, uh, the, the origin stories lecture that's under uh, today's link as well as um, Wednesday's link and then get together in your group and I'm going to go ahead and, and write up what the assignment is and put that up on D2L in about an hour. All right. Uh, so that is about it for now. Uh, TAs, any kind of questions that I should be answering here? All right. I'm trying to take a look here. Are we doing the attendance quiz? Yep. The attendance quiz is going on right now. Uh, the answer is green for today. Um, so go ahead and put in green, you'll get your attendance credit. All right. All right. So I think uh, most people looks like the attendance is working just fine. If you had any issues with it, um, don't worry about it. Right. It's you get like nine misses. It's fine. Um, there is a time limit on these things. So make sure that you wait uh, until we get to the attendance slide to go ahead and open it and answer the thing. Um, but again, you know, you're you're not missing any points if you miss one of these things. So so it's no big deal there. Um, OK. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to uh, go ahead and post exactly what I want you guys to do in your group work um, for homework on D2L. So check both today and Wednesday to see what uh, the deal is with that. I'm going to have you guys watch a kind of short 15 to 20 minute lecture on origin stories around the world. Uh, if you have extra time, feel free to start poking in to the readings for Friday. But we're not going to talk about those on Wednesday. We're going to wait until Friday for that. Um, so, okay, that's the plan for right now. Stay tuned. I will email out uh, as well with what I want you to do in that group work. Um, good work today. I promise we're going to get this thing working like a well-oiled machine. I hope you guys have a great couple days and I will see you back here on Wednesday.